Now that drinking at home is not only a lot of fun, but also the socially responsible thing to do, it's probably time to make sure your home bar is up to scratch. We've seen a huge upsurge in people interested in making cocktails at home, and lots of people are asking what are the best spirits to buy. Well, let's take a look. The most important thing to remember is that it is your home bar. There's no point filling it with things you don't like just because they're cool or because someone tells you to. So this is just a guideline to help you build on according to your own tastes. I'm going to take you through building your home speed rail. That is some go-to spirits that are great neat and for spirit mixers and also in cocktails. And also which flavor modifiers to invest in to allow you to make a huge range of delicious drinks at home. Plus, I've thrown in a few hints, tips, and easy to make home ingredients that will really elevate your home mixing game. I've suggested widely available products with a few local heroes thrown in for my Melbourneian friends. But if you have a local bottle shop and you can support them, then please do. And they'll have lots of great suggestions about products local to your area. If you find any gems, let me know in the comments. It's always great to hear about new things. If you'd like to know what tools and equipment you should invest in, then here's a video about that. But for now, let's get into the good stuff. I'm not a purist when it comes to spirits. If you want to use your fancy single malt in a cocktail, then absolutely do it. And now is definitely the time for small luxuries. In my house, we had an Australian single malt, Bobby Burns, the other week, and it was delicious but you also definitely don't have to break the bank to stock your home bar. So here's my pick for six versatile bottles to have in your speed drill. By the way, if you are new to this channel, thank you for watching. We've got heaps of content for anyone who shares my love of all things bar and booze, so why not hit that subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified whenever a new episode comes out. Starting with vodka, it's a very clean spirit. It's usually used as a crisp base just to carry other flavors, but vodka and gin being quite light white spirits are actually quite interchangeable in bright citrusy drinks. So I would go for a vodka with a good amount of texture. So something like Belvedere, because it is made from rye, it has a really nice spice and will stand up just as well in most recipes which call for gin. And that opens up a plethora of other options for you. If you need any ideas, then take a look at my five great gin cocktails video. Locally, I do really love Archie Rose vodka because it has a nice creaminess and almost a little bit of a mint and apple aftertaste which does make it an awesome substitute in an east side. Gin is a tricky one for a list like this because there's such a wide range of styles available now. My go-to, because it works well in both boozy stirred down drinks and bright citrusy ones, is Plymouth. So it's very similar to a classic London dry style, so that juniper and citrus are the main notes rather than all the wild and wonderful botanicals you can find in new wave gins, which, don't get me wrong, are absolutely awesome but don't always suit every drink. This one doesn't jar in anything, but it is a little less dry and a little bit softer, um, making it just a bit more easy going and it's not gonna stick out like a sore thumb anywhere. In Australia, I like to reach for Never Never for classic cocktails as it has the beautiful juniper backbone that you're looking for. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, good tequila does cost money. If it's not something you're able to invest in, then that's totally fine, but in that case, probably just leave it out. Margaritas are amazing, but definitely not worth the headache of using low quality tequila, and the Mexican agave growers will thank you too. You definitely want to look at something that's 100% agave, and Blanco tequilas are generally the most easily used in cocktails as they're clean and fresh. Obviously, if you love tequila, then feel free to look at some Reposados and Añejos for sipping. I find it hard to go past Areti. Um, it's gorgeous to sit by itself, but also brings really fruity and herbaceous notes to mixed drinks as well. Again, rum covers such a broad spectrum of styles that it can be hard to narrow down. If you can only have one rum though, something like Diplomatico Mantuano is great. So it's a blend of column distilled and pot distilled spirits. So sort of some lighter and some heavier. So it makes it nice and medium bodied. It's heavy enough to stand up in tiki drinks like a Mai Tai or Pina Colada, but it's also not gonna completely smash in and overpower something lighter and fresher like a daiquiri or a mojito. That said, if you are a rum head, then it's probably worth dropping one of the other spirits or just treating yourself and getting some, one light and one dark rum for versatility. For a white rum, 
I really like Plantation 3 Star because it's really big and flavorful. And I love Pusser's for a dark rum because it's just a big whack of funk and smoke. Now, this could be controversial, but my suggestion for American whiskey would be to go for a rye over a bourbon because it's such a different flavor profile to the blended scotch I'm about to suggest. Most American whiskey cocktails, to be honest, are not super subtle, so you're looking for a big punch of flavor. So Knob Creek Rye is perfect as it has a higher alcohol content to carry through that spice, but not a massively high rye content, so it's still quite smooth. Otherwise, the Gospel Rye is a banging Melbourne local, which I generally turn to at home. It is a little bit drier, excellent in a Manhattan. Blended scotches are generally the way to go for cocktails as they are much easier on the pocket and more easily mixed than single malts, which always want to be the star of the show. Dura's 12 year old is sweet and sherried, so it works really well for that smooth and rich flavor you're looking for in most scotch cocktails. And as I said, can also plug the gap for bourbon in a pinch. Starward Twofold is also a great go-to for any Australians wanting to support local and it is actually available in some places in the States now too. It's a lighter and brighter style which goes really well in a whiskey sour. Otherwise, if you do prefer a bit of smoke in your whiskey cocktails, then it's hard to go past Johnny Walker Black Label for the price point. Now that you have your speed rail sorted, it's time to work out what you're gonna mix your spirits with. These secondary ingredients are known as modifiers and can be combined with your base spirits in hundreds of different ways. The sky is actually the limit. Again, skew it towards your own palate. If you hate bitter things but love berries, then skip the Campari and treat yourself to a good quality creme de mûre or framboise, so like a blackberry or raspberry liqueur. But with these six bottles, or maybe seven, you should be able to build a well-rounded and sophisticated sophisticated home cocktail list. So bitters are really the bartender's secret weapon to elevate drinks to another level. Think of them as salt, so without them drinks can be perfectly fine, but with them they really sing. You can have so much fun with bitters nowadays, and since you only use a couple of drops in each drink, but they can transform flavours, they're a really good investment much cheaper than buying 100 different spirits. But Angostura is the classic here and for good reason. Its unique formula adds amazing depth and complexity and it goes really well in almost anything. So from old fashions through to tiki drinks and sours, it only really falls down in very delicate drinks such as a martini as it does overpower them. So if you can stretch to another bottle, then I would recommend orange bitters for some delicate floral notes and I actually often combine both Angostura and orange bitters for the best of both worlds. Amari are a category of bitter herbal aperitifs that you may not realize that you need, but you do. They create balance and interest in all sorts of cocktails. I find that Amaro Montenegro works well in almost every recipe which calls for an Amaro. So for example, it can easily be substituted for Amaro Nonino in a paper plane or Amer Pecan in a Brooklyn. It obviously won't taste the exact same, but it can achieve the same balance. It's also a delicious digestif just on the rocks with a wedge of orange or in a spritz. Although technically also an Amaro, Campari is easily the most famous member of this family and it deserves its own place on your bar as it has such a unique flavor. It's irreplaceable in the entire Negroni genre, so things like Boulevardier or Rosita. It can also be used in surprising and fun ways like in the Tiki style Jungle Bird where it's shaken up with rum, lime and pineapple juice. That said, Campari can be a little bit love it or hate it as it's pretty astringent, whereas Aperol has similar bitter orange flavors while being a little softer and sweeter. So if that sounds more your style, then substitute that in. And of course, nothing says summer like a Campari or Aperol spritz in the garden. Now, one of the most commonly used modifiers in classic cocktails is triple sec or curacao. They are both orange liqueurs and there's no legal difference between them. It's more of a question of style and history so they can easily be interchanged. Regular viewers will know that I'm a little obsessed with marionette curacao, which is made here in Melbourne because it's so zesty and fresh, but Cointreau is an excellent, widely available option. Just pay attention to the sweetness of your chosen orange liqueur. For instance, when I'm using marionette, I often have to use a little more than the classic recipe or add a little sugar as it's less sweet. 
although that is why I like it. I kind of like a dry finish. One fun tip though, is that you can substitute apricot brandy in basically any recipe that calls for curacao and voila, an equally delicious but completely different drink. So I love the Toreador, which is a margarita, but with the curacao swapped for apricot brandy. It turns out tequila plays just as well with stone fruit as it does with citrus. Vermouth is where the maybe seven bottles come in. Honestly, if you want to be able to craft a really wide range of classic cocktails, you need both a sweet and a dry vermouth. They can't really be interchanged for each other. That said, you can take a middle road, and that middle road is called a Bianco or a Blanco or Blanc vermouth, um, depending what country they come from. Some of them are technically not a vermouth, like Lily Blanc, but they are in the same wider category of aromatized and fortified wines. Have a look at my video all about them for a deeper dive on the subject. But these wonderful things are delicate enough not to overpower white spirits and martinis, but they also have enough weight and spice to stand up to darker spirits in Manhattan-esque numbers. Can also be used in shaken drinks like the Corp Survivor number no. two or the Scoff Law. So it is a white vermouth, but it has a higher sugar content and it is a little less delicate and spicier than dry vermouth. So it also means that once opened, it lasts a little bit longer. On the bar, I would obviously never do this, but honestly, I've had the same bottle in the fridge for months without it completely falling over at home. Obviously, if you are sticking with sweet and dry and using them in cocktails rather than sipping on the rocks, then the standard big names like Cinzano and Martini serve really well. They are, after all, what most classic cocktails would originally have been made with. And they do come in little half bottles if you're worried about not getting through them quickly enough. Remember that vermouths are still wine, so they do need to be kept in the fridge once you've opened them to stop them going all yucky and reasony. Look, it may not be the most conventional home bar essential, but hopefully if you've made it this far, then you'll trust me with this one. I could keep going on about naming different liqueurs and so on, but they all kind of do the same thing. Sherry is not a replacement for anything else on this list. Instead, it adds another dimension to flavor combinations we already have. So you can jazz up a martini with a sherry rinse or add a dash in your Manhattan for some dryness and complexity. And to clarify, I am talking about dry sherry here, not like sticky sweet PX. If you tend to drink lighter spirits, I would go for a fino sherry, which is gin's best friend. And if you prefer darker spirits, then an amontillado is great and it goes really well with rum and whiskey. For use in cocktails, something cheap and cheerful like Tio Pepe works really well. They do both fino and amontillado. It won't get lost. Also, Gonzalez Baez or Lusto are good options as well. So there you have it. 12-ish bottles to use as building blocks for your home bartending career. And once you start thinking of them as building blocks, it's really easy to play around. So for instance, you could start with a gin sour. So you've got gin, lemon, and sugar. So your base spirit, your sour, and your sweet. Then you could progress to a white lady, which is gin, lemon, curacao, and egg white. So you're just changing up the sweetener from sugar to orange liqueur. And then next, maybe try a Pegu Club. So that's gin, curacao, lime, and bitters. So you're changing up the sour element and adding bitters for extra depth. And then next in your journey could be a London calling. So gin, lemon, sugar, bitters, and dry sherry. Practically the same as a zingy gin sour, but with an added dimension of interest from the sherry. So you can see they're all in the same wheelhouse, but definitely unique. That's enough to get you started, but stick around if you'd like to know some easy tips and tricks to expand your repertoire even further. Now, I can completely understand at this point you not wanting to spend any more money on your bar, but still wanting to introduce other flavors. So, enter syrups and juices. Some can be bought for a fraction of the price of spirits or liqueurs, and some are really simple to make at home. For these ones, I will add the recipes below and on my shiny new website if you want to check that out. So sugar syrup is a necessity for a home bar. You can buy it, Monin's always a good option for bought syrups, but it's literally just one part sugar to one part water and mix it over a low heat until it's combined. It's fun to play around with different sugars as well. So for instance, using cane sugar or demerara sugar, which is a much darker sugar and therefore has a much deeper flavor to use alongside dark spirits. Now, the most commonly called for syrup in classic cocktail recipes, like in one of my favorites, the Scofflaw, is grenadine. It's a pomegranate syrup and the juicy fruitiness combined with a high acid make it way easier to balance with almost any spirit than most other syrups. 
you can buy it and if you do please make sure it's a good quality one so something like this little crafty Jack Rudy number or Crawley's is a more readily available one and not a day glow red cordial but it's also really easy to make so you just need to add one part pomegranate juice to one part sugar and simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's a loose syrupy consistency for added depth of flavor go a little bit Middle Eastern and some orange blossom water and pomegranate molasses are really awesome in there, but they're definitely not necessary. Honey is nature's own sweetener, as they say, so it does make sense that it's delicious as a sugar replacement in cocktails. One of my favorites to make at home is a bee's knees, which is basically just a gin sour with honey, but it feels a little bit fancier and you almost always have honey in the cupboard. It can be a little bit difficult to handle though. I usually sit my honey in a warm water bath until it loosens up a little bit and then mix it one part honey with one part hot water. And this just makes it way easier to pour and control measurements so you have something this kind of consistency rather than an actual jar of honey. Now honey and ginger go hand in hand and they form the basis for probably the most famous modern classic, the penicillin. However, it's quite fun to have them both separately and then combine them when needed and that way you can use them independently as well. So the easiest way to make ginger syrup is to slice up a root of ginger and simmer it in sugar syrup for about 15 minutes and then leave the ginger in there as it cools. The more ginger that you use and the longer that you leave it, the spicier it gets. I like to leave it in overnight for a real kick. And this works really well to liven up tiki rum drinks. You can then just mix it one to one with your honey water for a honey and ginger syrup. Alternatively, if you're not too bothered about having separate syrups and just simmer the ginger directly in the honey water. Now, passion fruit, similarly to pomegranate, has such great acid that it is almost always a welcome addition to cocktails. In fact, my friend who judges a lot of cocktail competitions did say that he doesn't think it should be allowed anymore because it just automatically makes everything delicious. The great thing about it is you don't have to do anything with it. You can just stick it straight in the shaker. You can obviously use fresh, but you can also get tin passion fruit at most supermarkets, regardless of the season. And then you can just have it in your cupboard for whenever you need a little tropical pop in your life, even if it's just mixed in your g and I always say that rules are made to be broken and I have to say an anomaly to the fresh is best rule is pineapple juice. I actually find that most recipes which call for it really need the sweetness from long life pineapple juice. It's also a natural foaming agent so something like a French martini doesn't get its frothy head from egg white but actually from shaken pineapple juice. It's also used in a thousand tiki drinks and it's much cheaper than a flight to the Caribbean. There you have it. Everything you need to take your home bar to the next level. So now you know.